Jesus teaching and discourse that really covers just a wide gambit of, of uh, topics, and, and all of them are linked, all of them go together. He's been uh, talking a little bit about uh, s- some of the ways that they uh, express themselves to God, their, their worship individually, as even just as Jews. Uh, and in chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, he talks about the, the, the practice of, of righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. Uh, and he talks about the hypocrites, and so uh, you know how you give uh, your alms to the needy needs to be done in a, a particular way. And then he reflects that in verse five. So Matthew chapter six, verse five says, "And when you pray, you must be you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you go, when you pray, go into your room." And shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. And he gives them an example. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Uh, So in in Jesus' sermon on the mount, he he includes teaching on prayer uh, as as the spiritual discipline, you might put it that way. He says, when you pray, not if you pray, when you pray, uh, it it was a foregone conclusion for the people he was talking to that, that at some point they were going to pray. Uh, He tells them to pray in secret because public view can often affect our conversation. I think you probably experienced that. You have a different kind of conversation privately than you do in public, typically uh, with your family members or or, uh, really with anyone. Uh, you can you can change the the whole uh, content of your conversation depending on whether it is public or private. So he says, do this in private because we know that's going to affect the way that you speak uh, to God. He encouraged honesty and sincerity in prayer because, after all, God already knows what you want and what you're going to talk about, but He still wants you to talk to Him. He's more concerned with their attitudes, Jesus is, and and motives in prayer than the structure here, don't you think? Uh, And I I know we kind of get hung up on that sometimes. Yes, there is a form to this prayer as an example, uh, and I do think we kind of need to be, be thinking about the, the form and the, the, the basic elements that he includes in this prayer, but he's not saying that every time you pray, you must verbatim speak these words, because he kind of goes against that when he says, you know, don't, don't let your words just multiply uh, and, and be meaningless uh, in other situations. So to whom does he tell us to pray? He says, our Father who art in heaven, the Father. Where is this Father? He's in heaven, and uh, it's, I guess, fitting that I'm, I'm talking to you this, about this on Father's Day. Um, okay, we'll take a break. I'll try a joke. This is rare for me, so bear with me as I try to do this. So there's three fathers in the waiting room uh, expecting their arrival of their other kids. You may have heard this one before. Um, the first father, uh, the nurse, comes out and, and speaks to him and says, uh, congratulations, uh, you've got twins. He says, hey, that's great. I happen to work for the Minnesota Twins, so that works out just perfectly. Uh, so then, of course, the second uh, nurse comes out and, and announces to the second father that, uh, uh, it's congratulations, you've got triplets. And he you know, says, uh, that's awesome, I work for 3M. And uh, the third father goes running and screaming down the hallway um, because, and of course, we find out later that uh, uh, he works for 7Up. <laughs> right? Uh, that's a problem. Uh, no, that's a blessing. Uh, fatherhood. Fatherhood. Uh, it's a daunting task at times. Uh, but when we look at the way that uh, our Father in heaven speaks to us and reacts to us and loves us, it's no wonder then that, that Jesus would teach us to first and foremost say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. There's something special about this father, something unique about this father. And all fathers, yes, we should follow his example in our love, but let's not for a second think that we share in any way his position. Uh, We have authority in our families. He's given us that, but he doesn't want us to abuse it the way that I've seen some fathers do. So there's a lot to be said about that. Our father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. There's praise. There's recognition of God's position. The first request that is given here covers really all others. Uh, God's will be done everywhere, on earth as it is in heaven, everywhere. The second request merely for the basic needs of life in our temporary state here on earth. The third and fourth requests have the most gravity, I think, for us individually because we need forgiveness. We need it. Without it, we're lost and our, our fate is sealed. Uh, Romans 6.23 tells us the wages of sin is death. So that's our fate if we don't have forgiveness. And then secondly, or fourthly, you might say, we need deliverance. Deliver us from evil, from the constant threat of Satan's schemes, the temptations that come to us every day. So for these things, we beg, we plead in prayer. That's what Jesus is saying. Important to, uh, to consider this. And as we continue to talk about prayer as the new